Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I had a question from a reader the other day about watermarks. And uh, this is one of those things that has been debated and debated and debated and um, kind of like the megapixel thing. Do you need more megapixels or don't you need more megapixels? And everybody ha kind of has their own opinion on it. I definitely have my opinion, which I'll talk about a little bit. I actually have uh, two different watermarks that I use. One, as you see here, uh, which is my watermark if I'm sending an image to a client, uh, if it's something that um, I th either I need to, to, to mark for proofing purposes or to make sure that, you know, basically they don't use any images without paying me. Um, you know, I do charge per image, especially for a lot of commercial clients. And, uh, you know, they're not going to want to use an image with this big watermark across it that has my name on it. Um, so that that's what I do. Any kind of event photos, any kind of images that uh, would possibly be sold in print form um, or digital files to a commercial client, I'm going to watermark them. So, uh, you know, and I have this big, huge watermark right across the middle of the photo with my name and a copyright symbol. Um, and that's what I email out. Now, in my public areas, uh, like here on Flickr, you see this little, just the little Kazilla logo down here in the corner. And that's my second watermark that I use. Uh, why do I do that? Well, uh, it's a little more stylized. It's a little prettier. It looks a little bit nicer. Uh, it's also, uh, it doesn't detract from the image quite as much. I really want these to display well and show well. So that's why I use both of them. Now, I have in the past... Actually, if you look back at my Flickr a lot, you'll see uh, other watermarks where I had them across the, the middle or the bottom or something like that. And I've kind of gotten away from that, especially with my new logo that I have. It looks good. Um, you know, it's a cool logo and a branding thing. So um, anyway, that's what I've been doing as of late. I used to watermark the heck out of everything, and everything had to have a watermark on the, that I put up on the web. Um, and I still do put a watermark on everything, but realistically, if somebody really wanted this image, all they had to do was grab it and then uh, recrop it. But still, you know, it, it's it's better than nothing. So uh, it's it's that fine line that you dance in between: do I want the photos to show really nicely, or do I want to protect my images? And that's one of the things that you just need to figure out for yourself. So how do we do watermarks in Lightroom? What do we do with them? Uh, how do I actually have these created? Well, first and foremost, uh, you actually have to start with a graphic in Photoshop. Um, this graphic right here, this uh, Kazilla logo, I actually had the logo made for me. And then I added the little line and the gradient and all that stuff. Um, there's a little bigger. I added these lines and the, grad the, the gradating area. Uh, the reason why those lines are there is so that this logo works on a light colored background or a dark colored background. So that the logo and my name and everything really stands out nicely no matter what image it's going to go on. All right, So that's why I have that. Now I did prepare that in a PNG file which is definitely the way the way you want to go so you have a little bit of opacity you see a little bit through it you know a little bit of color through it, a little bit of something through it and um, the PNG file when you export that from Photoshop won't have any uh, background or like if you use the JPEG file it forces a white or a black background and you know it has to be a, a full image it doesn't support any transparency so let's watermark this image uh, by the way, I shot this, I think, last year, back, yeah, back in 2010 at the uh, Bellagio in Las Vegas. All right, so we're going to export. Now, I already have my preset set, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how I do it anyway. First, let's start with, uh, with a big, bad uh, watermark, which is the one all the way across. Really easy. So, uh, you've set all of your options to figure out what size image you're going to export and then you're going to add a watermark all right and this is obviously in Lightroom 3 I'm going to go down here to edit watermarks and it shows me the image shows me where it's going to be placed and for this one I just uh, typed in the text down here because it's just a text watermark it's nothing special nothing fancy just typed in my text here at the bottom by the way for PC users uh, this is kind of weird but the easy way to get the uh, the copyright symbol right there is to actually hit alt and 0169 and it'll actually bring up that uh, copyright symbol again that's alt 0169 
and I'm not sure if it works. You know what? Let's try. I, I always do it on the number pad. Let's see if it works on the other ones for your laptop users. 0169. Oops, I typed it wrong. <laughs> Type 68. 0169. No, it seems to only work on the number pad. So I'm not sure why. So what I would suggest if you did want that little copyright symbol, to just Google copyright symbol and then copy that symbol from your web browser and then paste it into here. You could that that'll work out just fine. All right. So we have our text watermark. I've chosen the font that I had that I want and the style. Uh, my alignment. I want a big bad watermark. I want it right in the middle. So that's what this align center is for. Um, I chose the white color because it contrasts well with most of my images. You might want to edit it every once in a while or change that a little bit, maybe make it dark for some and, and light for others. Depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, now, opacity, most of the time, uh, oh, shadow, sorry, that's shadow opacity. Shadow, um, offset radius and angle, that just lets you stylize it a little bit. Not really a big deal because this is just a, the big bad watermark. You know, I'm not really making this, trying to make this look good. All right, so the next one is obviously uh, the, the main opacity of the text. Now, this one, I actually have two of them, one of them with a lighter opacity, one of them with a darker opacity. And so, again, it, it depends on what I'm doing, what I'm uh, kind of how I'm feeling that day, which one I'm going to use. Um, proportionate, you can actually set the sizing of how you want that to go. Do you want it to fit or do you want it to fill? Now, most of the time... I want it to fit and I want it to go all the way across the entire image and the nice thing about that is um, that if I make the image a thousand pixels maybe I need to show the client a little bit more detail or maybe I'm sending an image to an editor and that uh, image needs to have a little bit more detail a little bit bigger but it's not a final image it's still a proof image and I don't want to I want to make sure that they're not sending the wrong image to the printer and so that's what I'm doing there. I'm using that um, you know, the the fill the fit size to go all the way across. All right. So that is my thought because that's what I want it to be. Now the it's all of a sudden freaking out on me. This doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Oh, because I was playing around. There we go. All right. So there it is. There now proportionate. You can obviously set your size. You can make it really, really big, or you can make it small. Um, and then, uh, but like I said, my choice is to fit. Just play around and figure out where you want it. Um, let's actually talk about anchor before we talk about inset. The anchor is uh, where do you want it to be? Do you want it the the middle of it, the middle kind of the middle right in here to be in the middle, or do you want it to anchor to the bottom left, anchor to the bottom middle, anchor anchor to the bottom right? That's I would suggest setting that first, okay. And then if you want to rotate it, you can. If um, you, know, you want it to be up vertical rather than horizontal, you can do that. So start off with that anchor, and then adjust your inset. And actually, I'm going to use that inset a little bit more when I show you the graphical watermark, which I'm going to do right now because I'm out of options. So the last thing you would do is come up here and then save current settings as new preset. Give it a name. Hit create. And then you can save it uh, as uh, it will actually be saved in your in your custom watermarks. And then you can also save it uh, in the user presets back in here in the uh, export dialog box. All right. So let, next one is a graphical style. So it's going to ask me to choose a file. Now uh, the files I have a bunch of files here, and again all of these. Are different like the here's just my mosaic file if I just wanted that one and obviously my sizing is way off so I would need to change that and uh, I probably also want my opacity to be a hundred percent on that now I'm going to adjust my anchor that's if I wanted that one to be in that bottom corner now I don't want that one I'm going to choose this one there we go and actually this graphic is made to be on the left side and it's the one that goes on my videos so I have multiple of those graphics alright so I would choose that left anchor and then uh, I would choose say a, a two pixel in and then two uh, horizontal if I wanted or even for this graphic I would actually use zero uh, I don't I like a little bit of space on the bottom maybe maybe go down to one I like a little space on the bottom, but I don't like it to be too far, and I want it to stay right on that left side, just like you see 
here it's it's anchored all the way to the right side but there's a tiny little space at the bottom just to bring it up a little bit all right so um, then again you can change your opacity you can change your size or the uh, the way that you choose to size it again if it's proportional fitting or filling and again just play with those to figure out what's going to work out well for you a um, couple more things about this dialog box you can actually go through the different images with this uh, these little arrows right here if I had multiple images selected which I didn't uh, that's why they're not working that's what that's for to show you uh, be able to flip through those images and again don't forget to save that watermark so that you can use it often and you don't have to go back in and set it up every single time so questions comments what are your thoughts on watermarking did uh, I miss something let's hear it all right uh, did I go over everything yep I think I did uh, Greg Cazillo Cazillo.com thanks guys see you